folks, Wish SE up here in New Hampshire. Had several requests from Glock shooters or people who have just purchased a Glock to better understand how to work and manage the trigger. So we're going to spend the next five minutes or so talking about some of the things that will make a difference to you Glock shooters in terms of the way in which that you run the gun. This is universal to all Glocks, and frankly, what I'm going to talk to you about is universal to all handguns, but this is specifically about learning to run the Glock trigger. The trigger press, pressing it straight back, the trigger prep or the reset of the trigger, and only allowing your finger to go off the trigger far enough for the trigger to reset. The nice thing about the Glocks, of course, is there's a tactile and an audio cue to let you know that your finger has come far and off off from the uh, trigger to let it reset. And what I want you to pay attention to is as the gun is fired, as the trigger is pressed, my finger stays on the trigger until I feel and hear that reset. And then I'm pressing the trigger very slowly back until the trigger engages again. So again, this is what it looks like. So I've taken out the slack. I'm at the point where I feel the resistance. I continue to press until the trigger breaks. Once the trigger breaks, once that shot is pressed, then we release it off far enough for the trigger to actually reset. And you hear that and you feel it. What many people do, particularly those people who are new to shooting, regardless of what platform they're using, is they do, they'll press a shot and their finger will come all the way off each time. And what that means is you've got a longer distance now to press that trigger, to press the shot, and therefore the chances of your sights getting out of alignment have dramatically increased in the Glock trigger what you really want to work on is that trigger press and trigger prep. We're going to demonstrate that right now. So the way that you develop this skill is actually by practicing it. And practicing it really is made more effective if you do it from a relatively short distance. Three yards, five yards is a good place to start. So I'm pressing out, I'm finding the front sight, and then I'm slowly pressing the trigger back along the axis of the bore. I keep my finger there until the trigger resets. So, one flyer out of that group, the rest of them are in a one inch square. It's going to happen. So what you're seeing and hopefully what you're hearing is that trigger resetting each time. Let's take another look and this time I'm going to just shoot one handed, strong handed only and we'll shoot and I want you to watch the trigger resetting and watch how I manage so that. Watch my trigger finger and the way in which it stays on the trigger after I press the shot. point is, is showing you that trigger. Now let's see what it looks like as we speed that up a little bit and why, especially if you're shooting in a fast cadence, having your finger on the trigger, allowing it to reset is going to make a huge difference. So that's that one-handed group of shots that I fired and again pretty much in a one-inch area. Is it as, as tight a group as the other one? No, but I was only shooting one-handed. So you can see that that trigger reset is making a big difference in regards to accuracy. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to speed up our shot cadence and give you a sense of how to ride the trigger reset so you can shoot faster and more accurately. So now I'm at about four and a half yards from our target. I've actually stepped back in the shooting house so uh, you can get this on camera. And what, what you're going to see here, hopefully, is that my trigger finger is staying back as I'm shooting. So, 
How we train ourselves to do this and manage this is start by being deliberate, shot. And each time you saw my finger was on the trigger, right? Because I'm at point. Once I've identified the target, my sights are aligned, I can keep my finger on the trigger. It's only when I break from point that my finger needs to go straight. So, out there, four and a half seconds. Combat effective hits within a four inch area. Some more of that same type of thing. So watch my finger. It's not coming all the way off the trigger. It's only coming off far enough to allow the reset. So one drill that I like quite a bit is shooting small targets, large targets, small targets. So in this case, uh, it's going to be a one, two, one drill, but you can also do this two, three, two, or two, one, two, three. And you'll see this on our target out there. So we have, these are uh, from Todd Green on PistolTraining.com. So you've got two small two-inch circles. Then you've got a four-inch circle below that, or maybe it's a six-inch circle below that. And you're just transitioning between small precision and larger groups. So when you're at that larger target, you can shoot a little faster. But again, trigger prep, trigger reset makes, it, makes all the difference in your ability to get those hits. So let's try that right now. So I come out, I index, and if I wanted to shoot, you know, large, small, small, fine, whatever. But I'm going to shoot small, large, small. So small. And again. So what you see here is, all are all my shots perfectly in that circle? No. Would I like them to be? You bet! <laughs> but all of our quick shooting uh, shots, so the ones of the groups of two or three, kind of that burst of uh, shots, is right in there. And the shots that we take on the smaller targets are within no more than a half an inch of the line. Again, is this perfect? No. But I want to keep practicing to make it perfect? Darn right. So let's do it one more time. And again, watch my trigger and watch the trigger reset as we shoot. Okay, so once we've worked the kinks out of managing the trigger and just really figuring out how to ride and use the reset to our advantage, then it's uh, critical that we start combining it with, you know, combat effective uh, shooting. So, you know, a burst two to five rounds to the center chest and the ability to make precision headshots on demand when we need to. So out there now at seven yards, uh, we have a target and we've got our camera on the target as well as on me. So you'll be able to see these hits. And again, we're not going for just exact precision. We're going for accurate center mass within a reasonable time frame. So what you see out there is, you know, we've got uh, them in the general mass, the general upper chest where we're aiming. Our headshots, headshots are in that ocular cranial area. Again, this is what we're working on, and this is where that trigger prep and the trigger reset really makes a difference, especially when we're shooting in these bursts and we're going for speed. So once again, let's take a look. So what we're seeing out there is all of our shots are right in the upper chest, right in the upper chest. I've got one or two, maybe three that broke the line right at the top, okay? So they're, you know, right at the top. A little higher than I'd like, but that's okay. That's why we practice. All of our headshots are right in there. I think what you're seeing on the trigger is that real deliberate action of managing the reset and not letting my finger come all the way off and then slapping it. So as soon as I fire a shot and see the front sight, I'm simply coming back and doing it again. That's all there is to it. Just need more ammo.
You can do that all day long, especially at that cadence. One, two. So that's about two shots a second. As we get into three, four, five shots a second, then we're, we're going to open up, at least with my level of skill. Now, there are other people who can shoot five shots a second and just be right in there. These are top competitive shooters. I'm not one. Okay, Glock 26. See, I'm doing the exact same thing. So even though the model has changed, 34, 19, uh, to 26, we've gone from the largest to the smallest, the process is exactly the same. So let's watch the target down there. whatsoever. Can I be more precise? Yeah, I can be more precise. Let me dial in. I was shooting, you know, a little faster. So let me dial in and just really focus on the trigger press and the trigger reset. Okay. It can be done. It can be done with any gun. How good is that? So that's a quick look on how to learn to manage the trigger. If you combine this work on precision shooting at distances of three to five yards, then you can work your way out. This is a key to accuracy. Front sight, sight alignment, trigger press, trigger prep, which is the reset and doing it every single time. In shooting competitive uh, matches that I've shot, what I notice is the top shooters are riding that reset. What I also notice is the people who don't practice this technique are slapping the trigger and getting shots that end up being typically low. So if you're a Glock guy and you've got a situation where you're, you're new to the gun, just work that trigger prep, that trigger reset, and just keep doing it. Small targets, small groups is what you're going for. Well, folks, that's it. That's a video demonstration of some things that you can do to master the Glock safe action trigger. If you do learn how to really prep the trigger reset, so after you fired a shot, letting that trigger only out as far as you need to reset it, it will dramatically increase your ability to shoot faster, so the speed at which you shoot, as well as your accuracy. The beauty of managing the trigger reset is once you've mastered this on a Glock or any handgun, it's applicable to really any platform that you're running. So if you do this on a pistol or you do it on an AK or you do it on an AR, you're going to find that your accuracy and your performance in making hits is going to really improve. I want to thank the subscribers who requested this. I certainly appreciate uh, the suggestion to make this video. It was fun for me to get out to the range. I also want to thank all of you for watching and subscribing. We've had great growth, and that's really um, because you guys are watching the uh, information that we're putting out, and I certainly appreciate it. So, as always, make sure you stay safe.